I've had a lot of requests on what type of settings I'm using on my Helix 5 G2 uh, when I'm out ice fishing. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you through the steps of getting your Helix 5 or whatever Helix or 7, doesn't matter, the same software, just different screen sizes, up and running on the ice. Um, so if this is the first time you're plugging it in or if you've had trouble out there on the ice getting your Helix to perform the way that you want to, maybe this video will help you sort out exactly what you need to do in terms of settings um, in order to get your unit to maximize its ability to detect fish and your lures when you're out there. So let's get started. Okay, when you first start up your unit, it's actually not even in the correct mode. So what the, you need to do is when you start it up, you need to go, if you're on your sonar screen, any screen, just hit menu twice. And you're going to want to scroll over here to sonar, down, and you want to push to the right. This is going to turn it into ice fishing mode. It will reboot the unit. It asks you if you want to change ice fishing mode. You click to the right to say yes. Now it's going to restart. It just takes a second to reboot. You need to have your ice transducer plugged in um, when you do this. Okay, just press exit twice. And now you can see we're in a completely different mode. Now we have a flasher mode next to a sonar mode here. We've got our foot depth here, our gain, what cone we're using and what the diameter of that cone is. IR, I'll talk more about in a sec. You got your time and your battery. You can click view and I'll just do a zoom on the bottom. You can do just the flasher setting. You can do just the sonar setting. You can do zoom and whole range sonar. You have the enhanced depth and battery and time GPS. Okay, you can sort through. There's a bunch of them. I'm going to just take us to the basic sonar screen here just to get us through the basics here really quick. So the first thing, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to press menu once. And I'm going to go down to chart speed and increase it all the way to ultra. So that's the fastest you can go. Um, you just press menu twice to go out. And now we see this is moving much faster on the bottom. So if I take this little jig right here and drop it down, we'll see if we can see it just on the factory settings. And we can I can just barely see a line here. So we've got some work to do to get this unit performing the way we want it to. Now, I'm not a really a big fan of the dark screen. Some people are. They work really nice when you're in a ice fishing hut. Um, but I really do prefer uh, the white background. So I'll press menu once, scroll down, to sonar colors. You can scroll left or right to go through different colors. I really like white, um, white background and then the, the sort of purple to yellow mode in terms of intensity of signal. So now let's see how that jig turns up on the unit. I'm dropping it down. Okay, I can see it a little bit better now. I can see this line. It's not great. Um, I still need some work to do. So I'm going to leave this jig down here. It's going to help me dial this in really fast. So I'm going to go to menu. And I'm going to push my gain around a bit. Okay, now we're getting a little bit better. Signal. I like Right around that 16, I like a little bit of that hot pink. Um, we're definitely getting to a harder signal return. So I'm going to leave it there at a gain of 16. Menu twice. Okay, now there's some other adjustments I can make here. Below gain, there's chirp IR. So this allows you to filter out noise from other competing transducers, or even your own transducer can produce noise and interference depending on structure 
um, that's around you. If you got a hard bottom, soft bottom, you got different types of reflection going on, you're fishing next to a rock wall. You can cycle through this. There's one. And you see it changes how uh, the, the image and the screen I'm getting. You see two, I'm getting just, it's really messy. Three, it really weakens the signal. Four, it's strong, but I'm getting a lot of interference on the bottom and on the top, I'm getting clutter. Five's pretty good looking. Um, six looks really good. Um, and that's as high as you can go. So you can cycle through that. Sometimes I have it on and sometimes I don't. Um, you know, with it off right now, I'm getting a really nice signal. So I'm gonna leave it off. So menu twice. Okay, let's look at something else. You can change your cone angle. You can just do straight 21 degrees. You can do cycling through 15 to 21. Um, oops. Or you can just do straight 15. So a narrower cone is going to give you a stronger signal straight under the cone. But at the same time, you're going to lose the ability to detect those fish coming in on the periphery of the cone down there. So I actually just prefer to keep it generally in the 15 to 21. Menu twice. Surface clutter. Um, I've got a little bit of surface clutter there, so I can actually, you know, if you increase it, um, it, it actually increases it. If you decrease it, you can get rid of it. So I really, most of the time, I'm going to run this about mid. Um, when I'm fishing rainbow trout and I'm getting fish hitting near the surface of the ice, um, or other fish that are feeding near the surface of the ice, I'm actually going to keep that clutter there because I don't want those fish to be... Um, lost, their signal lost. Uh, so I'll just keep it at a mid range there. But if you're fishing deep and you just want to get rid of that surface clutter, you can just put it all the way down to one. It'll clean it up really nice. Okay. Menu twice. Let's go back. Chart speed we covered. That one's pretty important. You can have the RTS window. RTS window just basically, it's like a vertical presentation of a of the flasher setting, right? And so instead of a circular, it's just straight. And this just gives you a real-time feed of what's going on. I generally don't run it because I don't need it if I'm running this, uh, the speed on the screen really fast. Okay. You can increase the how wide that window is. We already went through sonar colors. So that covers the basics. I've got really nice um, signal right now. I can see my jig. This is a relatively small jig and I can see this as I drop it go down all the way towards the bottom without any problems. Here's just a little bit of ice that was cluttered on my line and that will gradually clear itself up as uh, that ice disintegrates. Okay, so let's look at some other things that you can do. Oh, there's a fish. See that? Oh, got him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> nice. There's the rainbow. Pretty little dude. Let me get him back in the water real quick. Okay, so let's keep going. Hit menu once. Hit menu twice. Now we can go through some of the other things. You can change your mode from clear mode to max mode. So let's look at what the difference is there. So let's go back to clear mode. We've got a little bit more noise there. Or you can do max mode. So I was on max mode. If you go to clear mode, um, so I'm actually getting a little bit more noise there and I might have to adjust my signal. So it depends. It all depends on those settings that you make on that first one, which one's going to be best for you. I generally run max mode almost all the time unless I'm in some really heavy weeds and I'll run the clear mode. So let's just menu it just so you can see. That's max mode. That's clear mode. And I can get rid of this. I can run it in clear mode if I want to by just turning down the gain and boom. One one down and it cleaned up pretty good. 
So even when I go back, it's not too bad. So go back to max mode. Contrast, you can in increase contrast by going to the left. You can see everything, the returns get harder and harder here. Or you can decrease it and it goes away. I generally prefer middle of the road because then I can tell what kind of structure I'm working around. So if I have a, you know, a really dark return, purple or red, I know it's a hard bottom or it's a big fish. Um, and I like to have that variability. Um, I can tell here this is a muddy, softer bottom because it's a nice, soft return. My jig actually has a darker color than that. Fish ID should always be off. You don't ever want to use fish ID because it just blocks your ability to uh, determine what's fish, what's a lure. Um, it's, it's really not necessary. If you have your software updated, it should automatically detect which um, transducer you're running. And you should, um, I like the XI9-1521, that's a chirp transducer. And this is where you go to change back to open water settings. I'm not going to go into navigation uh, or the GPS side of it. Um, I'm not going to go into charts. Alright, so setups. You can change this to metric if you need to, if you happen to live um, outside the United States. Um, you can change your speed, language, you can restore defaults. So if you get in here and you just screw this thing up so bad and you cannot seem to get it to work again, then go back here, go to Restore Defaults, and start everything over, and then it'll make it easy for you. You can change which uh, time zone you're in, so I'm in Pacific Time, so I can change that so I have the correct time here, so I know I'm not getting home late for dinner or making any family members wait on me. You can turn Daylight Savings Time on and off. Okay. Now let's go to Views. Views is actually a pretty important one. Because there's a lot of uh, views on here. So when I talk about views, I'm talking about every time you push view, you have to sort through all these different things. Well, I hate having to go through 10 different screens just to get back to the one or two screens that I'm using. So what I'm going to do is go to menu, twice, go to views. Okay, flasher sonar view, I don't ever use it. I can hide it. Flasher sonar zoom view. I can hide it. Flash review, okay, I might use that. Sonar view, I'm using that right now. I don't use the sonar zoom. I don't need the big digits view. Um, I'm not going to be using chart too much, but I will keep it up there because I might want a GPS uh, brush pile or something. I don't need chart flash review. I don't need chart sonar. Everything else should be hidden. Snapshot and recording view, I don't need that. Now, now when I go out, all I have to do is cycle through the few views I'm using. So here's my sonar view. Here's my GPS view. I'll give away my lake I'm at today. Here's my flash review. So here, if you've never used a flash review, I have a really good video on how to differentiate between these two. The original video I made was before this software update was available on this unit. You can see they've dramatically improved um, the flasher view. But I'll post the link to the video up above right now. Um, but basically, this is the surface down to the bottom, right here at 22 feet. Um, it's actually a little bit down in there, so there's a little bit of soft bottom. And then here's my jig. So you can see it going up and down. Okay, well I hope that this helps answer some of the questions about how to run your Hummingbird Helix G2 ICE units. Play around with that software when you're out there. That the power of this unit is in its flexibility. And I mean, even just making small moves, sometimes changes in alkalinity in the water, um, depending on if other anglers are out there, depending on the substrate on the bottom, depending on the water temperatures. Um, you can get inter different types of interference, and this unit will help you work through that interference and make it so you'll be able to get out there, you'll be able to see your jig and the fish come in, and you're gonna have far more success out on the water with this unit if you put in the time and learn how to use it. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, 
put them below and I will get back to you and you guys have a great ice fishing season. Be safe out there and catch lots of fish.